This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effect plugins, titling, video editing, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, and actually in the next few lessons, I want to talk about some new features inside of Boris Continuum Complete 11. Now, by talking about these new features, what we're going to end up doing is circling back and talking about some big limitations inside of Media Composer. Now, these are, are going to be especially handy to know, especially if you are a new user to Media Composer, or even Media Composer first for that matter. With these limitations, to get your work done as you need to get it done, you're going to need to seek out tools that are going to help you do that. And Boris Continuum Complete is just that. It is a toolkit for everything from fixing problems with your footage to getting in and just stylizing it up, whether it's with lens flares or glows or color correction effects or things like that. In this lesson, we're going to talk specifically about a workflow enhancement inside of Boris Continuum Complete 11, and it comes with the stacking of effects. Now, inside of Media Composer, effect stacking doesn't exactly work the way that we want it to, or actually really the way that we need it to. And up until version 11 of Boris Continuum Complete, we actually had a fairly handy way of doing it. But since then, we've actually had some big announcements such as Boris FX acquiring GenArts and bringing Sapphire into the fold. And what we want the ability to do is to not only be able to stack Boris Continuum Complete effects, but also integrate Sapphire effects into that stacking order as well to really give us almost unlimited creative power inside of Media Composer. So in this lesson, I want to talk about this workflow enhancement. And then in the next few lessons, I want to get in and focus on keying. I want to talk about the keying options you have at your disposal inside of Media Composer right now. And I want to talk about Primat Studio, the newest keyer inside of Boris Continuum Complete 11 and why it's a tool you're definitely going to want to check out. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And once we're in Media Composer, we are going to need an effect to work with. Now you'll see that I've created a title and I've put it appropriately enough on a background of waterfalls. And I want to thank Artbeats for letting us use this footage inside of this tutorial. And you can check out this clip plus thousands of others at artbeats.com. Now I'm going to call up the effects palette. I'm going to come down to the illusion effects category. And I think I'm going to grab this effect, the kaleidoscope. I'm just going to grab it and drag it and drop it onto the background. Now, to be honest, when you're dealing with effect stacking on clips of video, it's not really that big of a deal. We're just simply going to take an effect, drop it onto the shot. We're going to option or alt drag any subsequent effects on top of this. So for example, if I wanted to add a desaturate, we could take the color effect, option or alt drag, take the color out. It's going to do it to everything. But here's where we really start to run into a problem. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove that effect from the background. And I'd like to apply it to the title because you think that that would be something that's fairly straightforward. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back to the effects palette. We're going to take kaleidoscope. I'm going to option or alt drag it onto the title, except for the fact that it's now done it to the title and everything else. It hasn't actually isolated the title, which is, of course, a big problem. So how have we dealt with this using BCC in the past? Well, how we've dealt with this is we've used what's called the multi-filter workflow. I'm just going to close the effects editor here. I'm just going to close the effects palette. And let me just hide out a media composer for one second. Now, what I've done is I've taken a snapshot of the effects editor from BCC 10. And if you take a look right here around the middle in the title matte category, because in most cases, this is only relevant when applying effects to titles, when you're going to want to get in and add multiple filters to a title, what you're going to do is end up getting in and you're going to start things out by applying an effect and telling BCC that you want that to be a multi-filter start. You can then get in, add subsequent effects to make that the multi-filter mid. And then when you've applied the last effect, you're simply going to select multi-filter end. Now, this was all very helpful because we were really only dealing with Boar's Continuum Complete effects. But 
Like I mentioned in the intro, we've now brought Sapphire into the Boris effects family, and that's just opened up your timeline to just an absolute staggering amount of effects. The only problem is, up until BCC 11, we were still limited to only working with BCC stackable effects or getting and working with the Sapphire effects. Well, now we have the ability to work with both, and let me show you how this is going to work. What I'm going to do is just Command or Alt tab back into Media Composer, and inside of Media Composer, I want to show you the process for applying effects to titles. Let's call up the effects editor again, Command or Control and 8 on the keyboard. I'm going to come to BCC's blur category and I'm going to choose a Gaussian blur. Now you might be accustomed to Option or Alt dragging like I just said, but in this case we're not going to do that. I'm simply going to take Gaussian blur, I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto my title. Now as soon as I drag it and drop it, you'll notice that the background has disappeared and I can only see waterfalls, okay? Slightly blurry and you'll see that if I come into the effects editor here, which again opens automatically, if I take that horizontal blur and I drag it out, you'll see that we're getting that blur really happening, but that background still not there. So what's going on? Well, what we need to do is we need to tell BCC that we want to apply this to a title. And how we do that is we come to the title matte category. Now you're gonna notice things are a little bit different from that image I just showed you from the previous version of BCC version 10, all of that multi-filter options are now gone. But, but let's put that to the side for just one second. What I'm gonna do in here is simply come in and I'm going to apply this to a title or a mat. You'll see as soon as I do, I can now get in and blur this title as much as I want, completely independent of the background. Okay, now let me give you an actual real world example of how we're going to get in and stack effects. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this title back in. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to use one of my favorite go to effects, and that's Light Sweep. I use it all the time in so many different situations. So here's BCC's Light Sweep. I'm going to take it. I'm going to again drag and drop, not Option or Alt drag. Background goes white, no problem. Inside the effects editor, we're going to make sure that inside the title mat category that we apply this to a title, and you'll see there is our light sweep. Now, one thing you're going to notice right away is just how responsive BCC is inside the effects editor. Like, it's super responsive, okay? And we can get in. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, let's come down to my cone width. I'm just going to widen that out a little bit. Maybe we'll adjust the brightness of my, my intensity here. There we go. Very nice. And we could animate this to sweep across if we wanted to, okay? But what I'd like to do is I'd like to now get in and apply a glow to the overall title, but I want to add that glow as well to the light sweep. So how do we go about doing that? Because you see, again, like I said before, that multi-filter option is gone. Well, believe it or not, the process is actually even easier than it was before. What I'm going to do is up here at the top of the effects editor where it says background, I'm simply going to change that from first below to nothing. We're just going to put it on black. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take probably my go-to effect inside of Genart Sapphire. And to be honest, I've used Sapphire for longer than I can remember. And this probably is one of my favorite effects of all the effects I use in any package. And that's S Glow. It's probably one of the best glows that you'll actually come across inside of any effects package. And in this case, I'm now going to Option or Alt drag this onto my clip. Now you'll notice as soon as I do that this has now glowed everything of waterfalls and it's also glowed the light sweep as well. Now one thing I also love about Sapphire is you'll notice that we have some on-screen widgets that we can get in and adjust if we wanted to, but I'm just going to come back to the effects editor here. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come down and let's just adjust the brightness of our glow just a little bit right up here towards the top. I'm just going to take the slider wheel, just drag it a little bit, that's pretty good. Okay, so this is looking good, looking the way that I want, but I still don't have that background here. Well, here's the way that stacking now works inside of BCC 11. What you're going to do is with the first effect you apply, you're going to set that background to be none. Then what you're going to do is start stacking as many effects as you want from BCC or Sapphire. Once you're done and you have things the way that you want, all you're going to do is switch the background on the last effect from none to the track below, and now you have all of the effects that you want stacked exactly the way that you need them to be stacked inside of the effects editor. This is a fantastic workflow enhancement for media composer editors and you see that with each version of BCC the effects just become even more responsive and even quicker for you to get in and use and get in and animate so you can get these effects looking the way that you want super fast every time. 
Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris Effects is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.